What's going on my fellow rock and rollers? Don't forget to hit the bell notification icon to be notified every time I put out a new video on my channel. September 8th of 1995 marked a dark day for the up and coming post grunge band for Squirrels. Hailing from Tom Petty's hometown of Gainesville, Florida, they had just signed their first major record deal and were about to release what would be their biggest album of their career, but it all came crashing down. What happened? Stay tuned to find out. Formed in Florida in 1992, First Squirrels came together after several students at the University of Florida met and decided to form a band. There was one minor lineup change with the band's original drummer leaving, and the classic lineup would be made up of guitarist and vocalist Travis Took, bassist Bill White, vocalist Jack Vigliatura, and drummer Jack Grigo. The band's name was inspired by the large amount of squirrels that were seen on the University of Florida campus. Originally, the band wanted to call themselves The Four Squirrels, but changed it to Four Squirrels after another band in Ohio already had the name. The band soon enough started playing around college dorms and campus, and while they were rough around the edges, there was a glimmer of something emerging with Took telling Diffuser.com, at first it was like, this is neat. You can make songs up like a jigsaw puzzle, attach it to your feelings, and then play it for somebody. But we just wanted so bad to get to a place where it was like art. By 1993, the band had solidified their lineup and repurposed $6,000 of their student loan money to record their debut record, Bay Path Road, that was released through indie label YNT Music. The band's debut album was heavily inspired by American history. Songs like Flag Boy would be inspired about a young boy who would carry the American flag into battle during the Civil War. If injured or killed, another boy would take a spot. Upon first listening to the band, you can easily hear the similarities to other alternative rock acts like R.E.M., but you also hear sounds of some other bands like Nirvana, Toad the Wet Sprocket, and the Pixies. The band would eventually find a manager named Tim Bender who took a liking to the group and helped them get the attention they deserved. He flew the band around the country and booked a two and a half month long tour, during which they started to get major label attention. The band would eventually sign a two album deal with Sony and 550 Records in early 1995, and work promptly began on their major label debut titled Example. The band would work with producer Nick Lanay, who was best known for his work with Public Image Limited, Kate Bush, and The Talking Heads and the group recorded Example in both Miami, Florida and in the Bahamas. During the first week of September 1995, the band performed at the infamous New York landmark CBGB's during the CMJ Music Festival. The reaction to the band was positive, and following their appearance, they got back into their 15-passenger van with their gear and headed home for Florida. During the late afternoon of September 8th, while on Interstate 95, just south of Savannah, Georgia, a horrific crash happened. Keep in mind, this was two weeks prior to the group's Example album coming out. The band's van rear tire blew out, resulting in a crash that claimed the lives of singer Jack Vigliatura, bassist Bill White, and their tour manager Tim Bender. White and Bender were 23, while Vigliatura was 21. Took and 28-year-old drummer Jack Grieco, who had joined the band two years earlier, were the only two survivors of the one-vehicle accident. Took would remember Jack the singer was driving, Jack the drummer was the co-pilot, and White was behind the pilot in the bench. Bender was sitting behind the co-pilot and I was in the back. I'm not uncomfortable with people knowing that. I'm uncomfortable with the fact that I should have been sitting where Bender was. Van, once a daycare bus, had an extended rear section, heavy with equipment. Took would claim in the same interview that the band rotated positions in the van, with each member taking a turn driving. Took would reveal that the road manager Bender let him remain in the back of the van to sleep an additional hour, stating he was just being selfless like usual. Took was asleep when he heard a massive boom, remembering the tire didn't pop, it disintegrated. When the metal wheel hit the ground, it pulled the van to the right, and I think Jack instinctively turned the wheel the other way. When he did that, the side of the van caught, and we just started flipping down the highway. When it came to a rest, I was still awake. I had glass in me, I had broken my elbow, and I was in shock. But I knew right away that my friends were dead. I remember being outside the van and just screaming it over and over, he'd say. Took would be airlifted to a nearby hospital for a broken elbow and lacerations, while Grieco would undergo surgery for a broken neck and nerve damage in both his spine and arm. The band's label would put out a statement following the crash that read, There are no words to describe our grief at this terrible loss. First Squirrels were at the beginning of a long and successful future in making music. In our too brief time together, the Sony 550 staff had come to know Jack, Bill, and Tim for their incredible, talented, and dedicated people that they were. With example, for Squirrels leave behind a truly great album, one which captures all of the personal and musical qualities which endeavored them to us, they'd say. 
With the band having lost half their lineup due to the horrific crash and their new album several weeks away from release, the band's label moved ahead releasing the record. Took had mixed emotions about whether the album should be released, revealing, I thought people should still hear the music. If it were to get on radio or MTV, that would be a good thing. I looked at it like even though it's a tragedy, at least people will be introduced to the music. Now looking back, I do have some regret about it, a little bit. I don't like the thought that people automatically align the tragedy with it, but the music is cool and we did our best with it. That's what the guys would have wanted people to hear. It definitely sucks that they're dead, but it doesn't suck that a lot of people got to hear their music, he'd say. Since the album was put out in late September of 1995 and the internet was still in its early days, not a lot of people who had heard the band's music or became fans were aware of their tragic history. The label would end up releasing Mighty KC as the album's single and put out an accompanying music video. The song was originally penned about the death of Nirvana frontman Kurt Cobain, but soon took on a new meaning following the tragic van accident, with haunting lyrics including, Ship me off to the morgue, I'm ready to be buried. Mighty Casey would peak at number 15 on the Billboard Modern Rock charts, with examples selling over 100,000 copies. Took and Grigo did end up touring to support the album, bringing on bassist Andy Cook, and having Took performing vocals. Grigo would end up having a pulley contraption made for him so he could drum on tour, and reduce the pressure on his arm. For Squirrels would eventually change their name to Sabrosa after a few years, not feeling right about using the same name with Grico telling a Jacksonville newspaper, that's like walking on the bones of your friends. We weren't that band anymore, we buried our friends. The tribute we made to them was to support the record that we made together. It wasn't fair, it wasn't right for us to continue on. The remaining members released their follow-up, 1997's Never Bet the Devil Your Head, under the moniker Sabrosa. The band's sound was a lot angrier and more aggressive, understandably so, given the recent tragedy that unfolded in 1995. The album met decent reviews, but poor sales. And not everyone was happy with the band changing their name, as it proved to be a source of contention for the band's label, who still had the surviving members signed under their original contract. When the band refused to revert back to their original name following their second release, they were subsequently dropped by their label. The band got a high profile slot opening for Creed, but soon after Grieco left the music business, and a few years later Sabrosa finally broke up in 2001. Grieco would go on to study architecture in college, took stayed part of the Gainesville music scene, putting out new music under the name Helix Glow, and while Four Squirrels could have blown up into something bigger, Took doesn't live his life in hypotheticals revealing, I try not to think too much about it, it's the kind of thing that can really drive you crazy. Longtime fans of the band did see a partial reunion as Grieco recently performed with Took after 15 years apart, including performing for Squirrels music as well. That does it for today's video guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe. If you guys have suggestions for future topics, let me know in the comment section below. Take care.